Hey, how are you? Hope you're doing well and having a great day. So glad to see you and have you be part of our ministry tonight. And so glad that you allowed us to be part of your family tonight. This is Pastor Tony Collins from the House of Worship in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. You probably already knew that, but I'm so glad you're here. And uh, tonight I'm, I'm continuing in this uh, series that I've been preaching uh, at our church uh, called Wartime. The reality is, is that there's a, a huge battle that's going on and we're in the middle of it. And it's between good and evil. It's between the, the, the heaven and hell. It's between darkness and light. And uh, I want to make sure that you're equipped to win that battle. And the only way we can do that is to, to be in Christ Jesus. The only way we can do that is to, be, is to apply God's word and uh, his, his, his design, his, his, his strategies, his principles to our lives. And so today we're going to talk, um, we're talking about fellowship once again. And uh, we're going to go ahead and check out the message and uh, listen to what God has, has got to say. Uh, take some notes, if you would, because there are gonna be some good things that are going to come out of this message. We want to make sure you take some notes so you can uh, look back at them later on and make sure you apply those to your, to your life because there's victory wherever you find faith. Let's check out the message, and I'll be back in a few moments. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Sometimes victory don't look like you think it should in the name of Jesus Christ. But I'm the God of a turnaround. I take what the devil meant for bad and use it for my good. Oh, I thank you today. He'll tell you who you are. Huh? He'll tell you that you, you from above and not beneath. He'll tell you that you've been seated already. You've been seated with him in the heavenly realm. He'll, he'll tell you. He'll tell you who you are, but you got to be still and know. He's trying to get you to love him. That's what all he's trying to do, huh? He's trying to get you to love him, huh? He's trying to get you to understand how much he loves you. He's trying to get you to spend some time with him so that you can, like they say in Ephesians 3 and 19 says, he says, I, I want you to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Mm. That don't make no sense. He wants you to know what can't be known. <sighs> I want you to know the love of God that passes knowledge. He said, it's, you cannot understand it. It's too big for you. He said, but I'm going to show it to you if you just sit down right here beside me and let me show you. I'll let you know what can't be known. Huh? And once you know what can't be known, once you understand the love of God for you, once you understand God's great passion for you, once you understand who I am and who you are and how much I love you, he said, you'll be full of the fullness of God, Jesus. You will have all that God wants you to have when you understand the love of God that cannot be known. He'll talk to you. And when he's talking to you, you might not always like what he got to say. You know, there's a there's an evil spirit that's trying to set up shop in the church. And that spirit is that if you love me, you just accept me the way I am. If you love me. You love, if you really love me, you really love me. If you really love me, Pastor, if you really love me, Pastor, you really love me, you just accept me the way I am. You know, the way I, how I am, that's how God made me. So I, you, if you really love me, you accept me the way I am. You're judging me, Pastor. You, you, you're trying to, to judge me. Devil, the devil, devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Uh, because here it is. I see it in the word of God so plainly, so beautifully, that if I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. Oh, 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 oh. If I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I know you, you don't want me to tell you that you are out of relationship with God. And as a result of it, if you die in your sins, you're going to spend eternity burning in hell. I know you don't want me to tell you that, but in the name of Jesus, that's the truth. And if you will receive the truth, the truth will make you free. Mm, mm, mm. 
So, so, so sometimes when, when, I'm, when I'm sitting there, sometimes when I'm talking to him, sometimes when he's talking to me, sometimes he tells me stuff I, I don't necessarily want to, he, to hear, but I want you to know that he, he doesn't want to hurt you, but he wants you to be free. He doesn't want to hurt you, but he wants to help you. He, he, he tells you that so that you might be saved, so that you might be helped, so that you might be blessed, so that you might be protected, so he might show his love to you. See, I, I don't do my child any, any favors when I see them going pell-mell down the road to destruction without telling them the truth. This fellowship with God thing, it's all designed so that you will fall in love with him. Because uh, he's already in love with you, Pris. He's already in love with you, Brother Blevins. He's already in love with you, Cass. He's already in love with you, Natasha. The whole idea now is if you can just hang out with him for a little while, he's going to let you fall in love with him. And when I fall in love with him, oh, God, then I'll understand the real power of love. Oh, God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said, I, I want you to understand the love that surpasses knowledge. I want you to understand what you can't understand. He says, because when you fall in love with me, he said, then you'll find the, uh, the, the, the reason that I called you to fall in love with me because there's a power that's released out of my love for you. That when you fall in love with me, he said, let me, let, let me show it to you. He said, it'll make you do right when you want to do wrong. <laughs> Jesus. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, I thank you today. Anybody been captured by his grace? Anybody been heading down the road to do wrong, Sister Crane, and then the Holy Ghost? Mm. Made you do a U-turn. You can't even figure out why. Power of love will make you do right when you want to do wrong. See, you, you obey for a while out of fear. If your deal is you are, you are scared of God and you, you do your obedience or your obeisance to God out of fear, that'll work for a while, but you'll get tired of that at some point in time because nobody wants to be good all the time. Well, I can't get no help in here, but it's true, Sister Carolyn. Don't nobody want to be good all the time. You go your own way if you're afraid of God. You just deal with the consequences. Somebody might do it out of obligation because that's what daddy said I ought to do. You get tired of that after a while too. But sister, if I can get you to fall in love, what you won't do, you'll do for love. Might not change your, might not change your grandbaby diaper, but I sure change mine in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I praise God. Might not change your mama's, your mama's diaper, but I change my mother's diaper. What you won't do, you'll do for love. What you said you never do, you do for love. He said, I'm trying to get you to fall in love with me. When you fall in love with me, then I ain't got to worry about you no more because then you're going to do what you do because you love me. First Corinthians 1 and 9 says, God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. fellowship. Fellowship with his son. Glory to God. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Don't you know that our experience, our fellowship with Christ is what builds your faith? Your fellowship with Christ, you're sitting down beside Christ, your experience with Christ, your falling in love with him, it builds our faith. First John 1 and 6 says, if we claim to have fellowship, somebody say fellowship, with him, with Jesus, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And we do not live out the truth. In other words, what he's saying here is that if we say that we have fellowship with Christ, but yet you cannot see the light of Jesus Christ functioning in our lives. He said, in essence, what we are is we are ignorant in respect to divine things and how to apply those in the earth realm, what our human duty is as a result of the cross of Jesus Christ. The power of fellowship is the fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then secondly and finally is 
to fellowship with each other. One last thing about the love of Christ in respect to this message is that it is his cross that breaks us. It's his holiness that purifies us. But it is his love that transforms us. And if I am not in appropriate fellowship with him, it is impossible spiritually for me to be in appropriate fellowship with you. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Let's go to verse 14. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Let's go to verse 14. Here we go. Talking about fellowship with each other. For the body is not one member. Mm. You're not the body. I'm not the body. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. So in other words, it's because the foot says, I'm not part of the, I'm not the hand, I'm not part of the body. It said, no, it doesn't matter. You're still part of the body. If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I'm not part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body, the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. And if they were, if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Then I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Go to verse 25. That there should be no division in the body but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Just think for a second. Let's go grab a hammer. Let's pull out my hand right here. Let's take this thumb right here. And let, let me just take a hammer to that thumb. That's cool. The rest of the body's cool with that. Hey, man, let's just sever that baby off and chunk it over there. We can move on. No problem. I want you to know I want all of my parts, okay? I do. I just do. I do. I do. Uh, uh, Gail's grandmother says, baby, here's, here's wisdom of, from a century worth of living. Baby, keep all your parts, okay? I want all my parts, y'all. I want all of my parts in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? I want all of my parts. I don't, want, I don't want anybody leaving. I don't want anybody going some, in some other direction. I want everybody all together. No division. Us all walking step in step with each other. Us all considering each other. Us all exciting each other. Us all assembling together and loving and encouraging and building each other. That is what we're supposed to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Fellowship, not just with God, but fellowship with each other out of our appropriate fellowship with God. Consider each other. Excite each other. Assemble with each other share our Christ with each other yes. let me share with you about my relationship with the Lord let, let, let you share with me about your relationship with the Lord mm. we have an obligation to Christ we have an obligation to each other can I be a Christian and not fellowship can I be a Christian and not fellowship can I be a Christian and just kind of hang at the house Catch, uh, you know, T.D. Jakes, Joel Olstein, Adrian Rogers, whoever your favorite television pastor. Hey, anointed word. Um, you ever hear your favorite television pastor is? <laughs> Can I be a Christian without participating in fellowship? The answer is kind of. So here's what, what a pastor wrote. He says, 
being a Christian and not participating in fellowship, and participating in fellowship is not just about coming to church. It's about engaging in the body. So it's kind of like saying, you know, can, can, is my thumb really a thumb if I chop it off and, and, just, and hang it out over there? Just, if I chop that thumb off and just put it over here, is, is, the, is, the thumb, is that thumb really a thumb? And so the answer is, it says, it says, says kind of like this. It's kind of like a student who doesn't go to school. A soldier who's not part of an army. A citizen who doesn't pay taxes or vote. Uh oh. Uh, a salesman who doesn't have any customers. An explorer that doesn't have a, a base camp. A seaman who's, who's, who's not on a ship. A businessman who's on a deserted island all by himself. An author who doesn't, who doesn't, who doesn't write any books. A football player who doesn't have a team. A politician who really is a hermit. A scientist who does not share his findings and a bee without a hive. See, the reason that we ought to have a fellowship, we ought to go to church and have fellowship, this pastor goes on and, and says, is because being together with other believers is significant for the body of Christ. That the church is more than just a place for us to come and, and engage in the activities or the rituals of Christianity. It is a place where we come to find God and a place where we come to share God with others. So we're supposed to fellowship with each other. And that means that we're supposed to encourage each other and build each other up. We're supposed to encourage each other and build each other up. As I said before, I need to be encouraged and built up. I need to be encouraged and built up. You need to be encouraged and built up. I need, I'm obligated to Christ to encourage you, sister powers, and build you up. You're obligated to Christ as a believer to encourage others and to build them up. Here's what's inherent when I choose not to fellowship. Stay with me now. If I'm obligated to Christ to encourage you and to build you up, and if I need to be encouraged and built up, and I make a choice not to fellowship, not simply not to come to church, but to, to come to church and not participate and engage in the body, what I am saying inherently in that is, I don't need to be encouraged or be built up. I'm good. I'm good. You know, my life is good. My life is good, Doc. Psh, man, come on, man. I mean, y'all see me. You know, you know me. I'm good. I'm good. Sister, you know, I'm good, Sister Ashley. You know, I, I, I don't have any ripples in my world. It's all, I'm on the escalator, and that's always going up. Okay? There's never any valleys. It never gets crooked. The, the, there, there's nothing wrong here. There's no darkness. Everything's good. Uh, me and my wife is awesome. Me and the kids are awesome. Me and the grandkids are awesome. The finances are awesome. Me and God are awesome. The career is awesome. Everything is clicking at 100%. Sister Tate, ain't nothing wrong here. I don't need you. And because I got my stuff hooked up the way I got it hooked up, the only reason, I, the only reason you're going to hang out with me anyway because you're going to try to get me to give you some. So I don't need you and you don't need me. So I'm good. So God bless you. I'm, I'm so glad there's none, none, none of those are here today. But people who bust, who bust down the doors before the benediction's halfway over, what they're saying is, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good, brother John. I'm good. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't need you. I don't need you. I, I don't. I don't need to be prayed. I don't. I, I don't need to be prayed for. I'm never gonna need to be prayed for. Okay. And I don't. I, and I don't want to know you. I don't want to know you. I don't want to know you to the point where you ask me to pray for you. I don't. I don't want to know you like that. I want to know you like, hey, how you doing? Everything all right? Good. Okay. See ya. Oh. Oh, that's what you're saying. Oh, that's what you're saying. Oh, that's what you're saying. Oh, that's what, oh, oh, yes, oh, yes, it is. Holy hush, that's what you're saying in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? Say, so, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need you. You don't need me. I'm good where I'm at in the name of Christ. But the devil is a liar. I'm not as strong as I, I want to be. I, I can't have the fullness of God working through me in the name of Jesus Christ. There's got to be some level of transparency in my relationship with you. 
I'm not saying I got to tell you all about my mess and all the junk and everything I'm going through, but every now and then, I got to pull alongside of you, Washington, and say, man, hey, man, it's getting kind of rough right now, dog. I'm, just, I'm struggling with it just a little bit, man. You know, I know God loved me. I, I know everything is going to work out for my good. I, I know everything is all right, but I just, I'm struggling with it a little bit right now. Could you say a prayer for me, dog? I'm going to be all right now. I'm not going to go the other way. I'm not going to turn around and go back, but I'm struggling with some stuff right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know every now and then, even the pastor need to be encouraged sometimes. You, 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 need, you need to get to know somebody in here. You need to know some folk in here. You need, to, you need to reach a point where, like, you've been hanging out with God and you've fallen in love with him. He wants you to fall in love with the church. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it reached a point, Sister Collins. It reached a point where on Sunday morning, uh, the alarm clock don't even have to go off because you so in love with the church. Jesus, you so in love with the church that you run into the church house. Nobody got to tell you about being here for Sunday morning Bible study, Wednesday night prayer meeting. You are so in love with the house of God. You, you. You took your clothes out Saturday night. You was, you was trying to get there. I'm going to hook that up with, ooh, that's going to look good tomorrow, y'all. You know, that's going to be, yes, baby, yes. He said, I'm trying to get you to fall in love with the church. I'm trying to get you to fall in love with my bride. Not just to fall in love with me, but fall in love with the bride. Huh? See, if you look through the Bible and you find New Testament where you find the church together, Guess what it's doing? It's meeting together, it's praying together, it's sharing together, it's eating together, it's advising or counseling each other together, it's working together. See, God's plan for you and I as a believer was always about being together. First together with him. That's why he said, huh? he said, I'm leaving up out of here. He said, but I'm going somewhere and I'm going to prepare a place for you. Jesus, eh. oh God, Jesus. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you might be there also. But while I'm gone, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to send the spirit part of me to hang out with you while I'm hooking up your stuff in heaven. He said, it's always been about me and you being together. Even the Old Testament, all I was doing then was proving to you how weak you are, how feeble you are, how horrible you are without me. That was all a setup for the New Testament. It's always been about us being together. It's always been about me and you, God and his children, being together. It's always been about the children being together in harmony. You got kids now. If you got children now, what gives you more pleasure than watching your kids hang out together, laughing, joking, smiling, having a good time, loving on each other? Nothing. He says, I, I want you and I to be together, but I want, I want the kids to be together. I want the kids to hang out and, and, and be together. Together with him? Together with each other. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Can't get sharp hanging out by yourself. Huh? 1 John 1 and 7 says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, if we walk in the light as Christ is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. When we are in fellowship with others based on the word of God, we can be assured that we have been purified from all sin. The lack of your fellowship, the lack of my fellowship brings into question your relationship with Christ. Write this down. Write this down. We come to church not to experience each other, but to experience the triune person of God. But 
it is through our experience with each other that we manifest our relationship, our experience with God. It is our fellowship with each other, our experience with each other. It is part of the process of our growth and the application of pleasing God. Oh, yeah. Let me say that again. Can I say it again? We come to church not primarily to experience each other, but to experience the triune person of God. But it is through our experience with each other as we interact at church that we manifest our relationship, our experience with God. And this experience of experiencing each other and fellowshiping with each other is the process of our growth and the application of pleasing Christ. Well, there you go. Great message on fellowship and why it's important for us to uh, be in fellowship, first of all, with God, but also to be fellowship with one another in, in, a, in a body of believers, a local body of believers. Um, are you going to church anywhere? Are you even in part of the kingdom of God? And if you're not, I want to give you opportunity to give your heart to Jesus Christ even right now in this moment. All you have to do is ask Christ to come into your heart, to come into your life, to surrender uh, your, your life and your heart to him and ask him to be Lord of your life. It's, it's that simple. And if you do that, when you do that, I want you to know it's the best decision that you could ever ever make you're never going to regret it and the joy the peace that comes from that the prosperity spiritually that comes from that the abundance that comes from that is just amazing and uh, it's this it's this, it's this the best decision you could ever make so we praise god for those of you who've done that let us know that uh, send us some information to let us know that you've done that and we want to just contact you and give you give you some information so that uh, we can encourage you along your christian journey also we are giving away to anybody that sends us a note uh, a wonderful bookmark uh, about who I am in Christ Jesus. So just uh, send us um, a, a snail mail note or send us, uh, contact us on the, on the web at uh, www.thehouseofworship.com and let us know that and we'll be happy to send that out to you as soon as possible. So we love you in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for your support and for your prayers. Uh, continue to walk in the Lord and continue to pray and believe. Continue to pray and believe God's word for your life. Have a blessed week and we'll see you next week at the same time. Bye-bye.